everybody, and welcome to the 19th installment of the Hot Mess Express with the lovely Miss Mary Page and I, Roxanne, from Foxy's Fishes. And the lovely Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> How are you this evening, Mom? How are you, everybody? Great. My sweetness, I'm doing good. I hope everybody's doing well out there. We're excited to see everyone. Man, we've got a big crowd in here already. Yes, we do. We have 31 in the door already. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. And I just want to say off the bat, if my internet's a little spotty, we had a huge storm roll through last night. And the creek came over its banks a little bit. And our internet box is under water all night. So internet's a little <laughs> choppy at the moment. So if I'm coming in looking like 8-bit, that's why. <laughs> but... Let's get to saying hello to those who have joined us in the chat this evening. Let's see. First in the door I see is Mike's Aquatics and Things. Hello, Mike. Thank you for joining us this evening. Maria Z, hello. Zen Ginger, hello. Lori, Monster Fish Gal. I see we have uh, Rock in the Coast. I think Rocco threw over to us. Thank you so much for the stream raid, Rocco. Greatly appreciate you. Hello, Terry's Tropical Tanks. Cassie B, I haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you for coming in. I've, I've missed you. <laughs> Ricky, you. hello. How are you? Let's see who else we have here. Sandy Dowdy. Hello, Sandy. Tennessee Aqua. Hello, Robert. Petro Man. Hello. Welcome. Jess, Mains Tails, Fur and Fins. Hello. Muppet, My Fish Tanks. Hello. Let's see who else. Oh, so many great people in here. Oh and yes, like Zen said, if you haven't hit the like button yet, please do. Greatly appreciate it. Helps the algorithm. Helps us. <laughs> Amber, uh, which we actually have backstage. She says hello in chat. Hello. Chalupa, hello. Let's see. Am I missing anyone? Let's Garrett? See, did you say Dee Dee? You got Dee Dee, didn't you? I think you got Dee Dee. Okay. I don't think I did. Dee Dee. Hello, Dee Dee. Skipper's Dee Aquariums. Hello, Skipper. Welcome. So many great people. Oh my <laughs> and I'm gosh, so I'm excited so for who our guest is this evening. Oh, we've got a great I, guest. Yes, I feel like I haven't seen her in so long, and I've seen her in a few streams recently, and I know she's been dealing with some health issues and some other issues, so I understand that life struggle. I've been there, done that, and I'm just so excited right. to have her up here just to chat with us. So nice to see her again. So if we all could, if you wouldn't mind, please give a warm welcome to Amber from Big City Bettas. Welcome, Amber. Hey, hey Amber. Hello. For having me, and oh, I, it's, I feel it's long overdue because there's not enough lady streams on fish. <laughs> I agree. I agree. The yeah. fish one could be a little male heavy on the streaming side, so I feel like we need a little more ladies, but luckily we've been having more come around the fish fam and more willing to stream, so it's exciting to see that side of the, the fish hobby grow, I think. Yeah, because it's definitely not just the online community, but having been around the club scene and expos, it's very much a predominantly boy hobby. So it's it's yeah. very cool to see other girls and women doing really neat things with fish on the platform because it kind of normalizes it a little bit, I think. I agree. <laughs> definitely nice to even it out a little bit more. Yes. <laughs> That's right. So so how are you? How has um, everything been going for you? It's been going good. Um, for those who know, I have, like Roxy said, I have um, a number of health issues that I've been dealing with, and mm -hmm. those are every day I'm feeling better. Um, the move is coming along slowly but surely, and uh, I actually found a kitten a couple days ago. Aww. I had just lost one of my two cats about a month prior, so it's kind of a nice little positive boost. It's it's hard to be bummed yeah. out when you have this adorable little kitten just about here. around. It Amber is. Amber and I have been talking about cats for the past couple of days. Oh, <laughs> look at yours. Yeah, there's 
I think for all three of us, there's never a cat far away. <laughs> yeah, my gosh. But I'm right there with you because I just moved a few months ago myself from Pennsylvania to Wisconsin, and I'm not the most mobile either. I use a walker to walk. I'm still learning to walk again. So that was quite a feat to have to pack up. It took me what felt like forever to pack the place and then to actually move was supposed to be like less than a day, but it took me three days to get here. Yeah. <laughs> and then it took me like two months to recover and I'm still getting like a sore back every now and again because of like I had a little bit of a setback. It was a very hard journey, but I'm finally coming through it on the other end. So thank goodness. So just take your time, take it easy. Don't rush anything. Try not to stress yourself and you'll get through it. A-okay. Yeah. I think, I think that's the one good thing about this whole thing is it's forcing me to know when to push myself and know when to sit. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. You definitely learn your limits w with this and what to push and what not to push. And same here. I'm just now starting to feel like I'm coming out of that fog of the move. It's been so, yeah. it, it just disrupts you so much. And then if you have to like move fish or get rid of fish or any of that stuff, it just like breaks your heart and it takes a little while to get back over it. So glad yeah. to see these, my ladies here, we've all made it through and we're going to just get better and better every day. <laughs> Hi, Danny. That was another part of the move is moving all the fish tanks and putting them, dividing them into three individual buckets with their own aerators. Like that wasn't the hard party. And they lasted three days like champs. They only had one casualty, one snail out of like 250 snails, which wasn't bad. But the worst part was that Gracie, my love, I, she had to be in the cat carrier, but for three days, three days, yeah. she cried, three days. <laughs> I don't she wasn't know. really the whole time. Like she got out, I let her stretch. She let her, I used the like the disposable litter box and stuff like that. But yeah. oh, just the whole time driving, she just cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. It made me feel so bad. Yeah, I keep I keep joking, but it, it might be very serious that when this one in a carrier, I'm probably gonna end up driving straight because he'll just make it so I don't even want to stop to sleep. <laughs> he screams horribly in the car. The whole oh no, she goodness. wasn't screaming. It was just meow, meow for three days. Three days. <laughs> I bet she was almost hoarse by the end of it. <laughs> I've had that happen. She Donna, hello, welcome. Did I miss anyone else coming in? Craig Broderick, hello, Craig. <laughs> the oh, we've got a great group in here. And thank you guys for the light. Do we have a moderator in chat right now? I didn't hear you. Is there a mod in chat right now? <laughs> and they took care of that. Okay, because it's coming through on stream yes. Thank you, mods. Yep. Hello, Susan. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> Susan. I think it was uh, Zen took care of that for us. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Zen, you Zen. Lord. I can't see it on the YouTube side. I can only see it on the um, StreamYard side, so I can't see that part. So thank you so much, Sunny. Really appreciate that. So thank you, um, with the move, I know you said that um, you're still you're still up north. You'll be taking your trip soon. I'm currently in Vermont, and I pick up the U-Haul the 23rd, and I'm going to be out either the 24th or the 25th, depending on how long it actually takes me to Tetris all of the stuff in there. <laughs> kind of funny, because so much of the stuff I'm, well, not so much. I'm bringing, like, 18, 20 highs and, like, 20 10 gallons and some fives, which can all stack within each other. So I've just yeah. had various piles of tanks everywhere and some like totes and things. And I finally put them all in each other, like nesting doll style out in the garage mm -hmm. with all my stuff. And I stepped back and went, wow, I want a lot more fish stuff than I do like personal effects. 
<laughs> I was the same way when I packed my stuff. I was like, the mound of fish stuff is so much taller than my own stuff minus my dress. <laughs> and so, so many people can't relate because they're like, why do you need a U-Haul? You, how much stuff mm. do you have? And I'm like, it's not my stuff. It's the fish, the fish is stuff. <laughs> It's My the fish two totes. Need it. Thank you. <laughs> it's the two totes of random fish equipment that I can't bear to part with. Because what if I need a what if I need a heater like ten and exactly the entire of different foods that you get throughout the years and you're like oh maybe I'll use it. See, I struggled <laughs> with that at first, but then I realized I'm moving to a fish hoarder's house, so I should be fine on that. Yeah. You should have plenty of those little pay. You get dress rocks, man. <laughs> that was actually see, awesome. Some more you people in here. Oh Hawk my God. Hello, Muppet. Hello, Danny Weshi. Welcome. No, love your song, Danny. I don't know if I got to tell you that yet, but I love your song so much. You made an awesome yes. fish pair, remember? No, Have you heard amazing. it? Yes. Oh, amazing. <laughs> I'm actually ashamed by how many times I've jammed out to that. <laughs> I've woken um, up with that song on my head before, so like it's just perfect. That's perfect. As soon as I saw it, I texted it to Lucas uh, LRB because mm -hmm. I'm like, look at this. And he got back to me like 30 minutes later. He's like, that is amazing. I'm like, is it? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Hello, Stephen P. Welcome. welcome. Yeah, love very, it, love it. Hey, everyone, coming yep. in. <laughs> it's funny though, you know, for people not in the hobby, they'd be like, "Yeah, you know, he can play guitar well, cool." And it's like, no, mm. you don't. You don't get why it's clever. Kind of like with the move, where half yeah. your stuff is fish stuff and the other half is you stuff. And yeah. people are like, "Why? <laughs> why do you have an entire two foot by two foot tote of tubing?" Amber, <laughs> you never know. Floss, pinky floss. <laughs> yeah, yeah just bags of bags of bat and padding. <laughs> oh gosh, no, it's gonna be I interesting. Know. It's gonna be interesting unloading if any of the new neighbors are watching me because they're gonna be like, "Why does she have thirty buckets?" <laughs> okay, <laughs> over there. Bucket per tank. Come on. <laughs> Well, it's the kind of thing where sometimes you're lazy and you're like, you know, I could scrub it or I could just get another one. I need another one. Yeah. Or I think you don't have any, but there's just like a stack of them dirty tucked somewhere. Or even <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you go to move and you're like, wow, I have so many buckets. <laughs> right. <laughs> nets. I'm finding I have more nets than I could ever have any use for. Yeah. Like, I have to buy all of these. That's a good net. <laughs> <laughs> also tweezers why do i have so many aquarium tweezers like there's just a rack of them one two three four five six seven i'm, I'm looking at seven right now and that those are just the ones that are put back where they're supposed to be <laughs> i have a little tote carrier because at one point in the house i had well over 100 tanks so when you have that many mm -hmm. of like your essential equipment container that you mm -hmm. can just bring with you and it has three of the same size tweezer different brands. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't even remember ordering one. <laughs> yeah. They're just multiplying on their own. Hello, Danikin and Daniel Villas. Welcome. <laughs> And lately, um, my pygmies have been, because it's been storming so much here lately, they've been dropping eggs like no tomorrow. And right now, we are on pygmy corridor egg hatching watch. So if you guys want to mind, I have, let me see. Oh, I have it pulled up. And if possible, I'd like to share it. Maybe we can see the little guy wiggle inside of his shell. Pygmies are great because they're one of those quarries that as they're breeding, you can be in there scraping <laughs> eggs and they're just like, I'll breed on your hand. I'll breed on yeah. your hand. I'll breed wherever. <laughs> <laughs> so currently this is under a digital microscope. Um, this pygmy so egg is inside the aquarium. He's on day five. Like he should have hatched already <laughs> um, at day three. I think this tank is a little bit cooler. He's very healthy. What we're looking at right there is the black spot right here. I don't know if my cursor is showing. Um, that's his head. 
And he's actually, he's been doing 360s in his egg today. So I'm expecting him to break out sometime within the next 24 hours. So we're on egg watch duty because I think it'd be so cool to catch him actually like hatching out of his egg. And the little red flashes you see behind him are just the cherry shrimp that go by every now and again. <laughs> Can I adopt that very one, Corey? Can I have that one? I want that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one very pygmy, Corey. <laughs> oh, that, one. that one right there. She'll I'll raise it all by itself in its own tank. Hello, Shanna. Welcome. And what else I found very cool is that these little dudes, I don't know exactly what they are, but they're some kind of um, column filter feeder. They uh -huh. um, some kind of sponge or something. But when the uh -huh. shrimp come by or the snails come by to clean the egg, they retract back in and then they come back out and they stick out their filaments to feed again. Yeah, my uh -huh. ex turned our basement into like a microscopy laboratory. <laughs> And mm -hmm. he was looking at, I don't remember what type of egg under it. And it literally looked like it was just, it had little hydra on it. And I'm like, what on yeah. earth? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, There's just like natural. <laughs> keep it Sorry. Um, how did I, it's, I actually don't have it submerged, the digital microscope. It's setting up on the glass. So the egg is on the other side of the glass in the tank and the digital microscope is filming through the glass into the egg, um, Stephen. <laughs> I didn't mean to just show everyone's face right then. But yeah, we've been the egg watch. <laughs> I was oh. really hoping like the little dude would hatch by this time. Um, we had three on the glass and like a bazillion, a bazillion eggs in the subwasser tank. And we've had four hatch from that. And then we have those three and we've had one of those hatch. So we're just watching these two and we're just waiting. It's so exciting to see it when it does happen. Yeah, that is really neat. So is that like an app you downloaded to your phone or do you have an actual microscope that you link with your phone? How it's, you a, it's a microscope that you can either plug into your phone or your computer. It's just a digital microscope. They're like $15 on Amazon. Okay. Um, for your phone, you download like a tiny little app to record it, but on your computer, you can just use your regular drives oh, to that's record really cool. them. Okay, thanks, Roxanne. Normally, I use it to like check out like if I do a scraping, if something's funky growing on a fish, I want to see what it is. I'll use that to look at it closer. Um, but yeah. I thought I'd play around with it this time and see if how well it would look inside the egg, and I was surprised how well it and how much diversity of an environment lives on the surface of that pygmy quarry egg. Yeah, that's really neat stuff. Really neat. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> at okay, Craig, thanks for stopping by. He's got to get back to work, which is a oh. good thing, and a bad thing, but you know, he's in that business. So <laughs> have a good night <laughs> or have a good day. It's morning and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. let's see. Uh, so yeah, what that's the difficult part, David. You have to get the you have, you have to play with it literally for hours. I didn't even set up that shot. Brian set up that shot and it took him like five different tries, like seven hours. <laughs> and he got it just tweaked just right. <laughs> Is that all your breeding or pygmy quarries, or do you have any other projects going on? Oh, I have lots of projects. I currently have the CPDs and the pygmy quarries and um, dwarf amber barbs and emerald resboras and neon green resboras. And Brian's got his version of CPDs. Oh, and how can I forget my mystery snails? Let me not forget those. And my white wizard snails. And Brian's got... We have 47 tanks, and plus what I got for my birthday. So <laughs> we're breeding a little bit of everything. <laughs> Y'all are busy. I've got to catch Who up with you. you on Resbora because that's an empty tank. That, that was definitely one project for me where the patience that it takes to raise them from fry to adult sized 
Mm -hmm. my gosh. <laughs> it's magical. They're so teeny tiny. But the CPDs probably are the best responsive ones. They grow the quickest. They're the least demanding. But all the other ones could be a little bit finicky. I didn't even know I was breeding the dwarf amber barb jet until I found some frying with the daisies rice fish. I was like, where did you come from? When why are you still red? You're not a daisy. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Yeah. But it happens. <laughs> How do you know they're happy? <laughs> they are. They're very happy. We added some tan um, tannins to that tank, and they just started dropping eggs everywhere, and the eggs are doing well, so. That is too cool. you have any breeding projects that you'd like to um, get into once you get down to Florida? Um, yeah, actually, I... I have a group of diamond tetras that have been nice. spawning on their own for the longest time. And I would really like to set up some tanks to raise up the fry properly because the, they're just my favorite tetra. And I think if you can raise them up right, they're so much mm -hmm. nicer than wild caught. Oh, yes. um, Indian pipefish are a species that mm. I've worked with in the past and I've gotten the males to the point. So they're like essentially a freshwater seahorse. Um, mm -hmm. so the males actually carry the eggs and larva in a pouch in their stomach. And while they're oh, doing that, they, they migrate to brackish water estuaries from, mm -hmm. from fresh. So it takes in order to raise them up properly to fry, it takes, um, a period of salinity, which I didn't do. Um, but I would love to actually do that properly again. Pea puffers. That's one that I think. Not a lot of people have done, but they're so common yeah. in the hobby. I think it'd be really fun to do it just once. I think so too. It's like it's like um puppies. You need to experience a pack of puppies just one time. <laughs> one time in your life. <laughs> and then after you've done it that one time, you go, never again. <laughs> or you might be like, this is all I want to do now. You never know. <laughs> uh I have Fresh out of college, I had a English Mastiff, and my boyfriend at the time got a female Great Dane, and we were like, we're going to breed them and have puppies, and it's, oh my gosh, I was mopping those floors like every 20 <laughs> minutes because they hit a certain age, and they just started getting out of their newspaper safety area. <laughs> and spreading. <laughs> How many did you have? <laughs> a bit we had of nine. We had oh, all goodness. Lots of puddles. <laughs> they were Dane Mastiff, so within a week, they'd outgrown the whelping pen. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, goodness. Hello, Elle Sox. Welcome. Father Fish, welcome. Hello. Thank you guys Father for coming Fish. in and hanging out with us. But those sound like really cool breeding projects. And Father Fish said, Flora is a great place to do breakfast fish. I'm excited for so, so this isn't exactly, I don't know, some people might frown on it, but I would love to have a series of like four 20 highs or maybe two 20 highs and a couple of 40s to do mm -hmm. native tanks of things I collect and to Ooh, keep nice. them and kind of keep them long enough to breed them successfully and see what they prefer and just kind of figure them out as a species and then either rehome them or if it's even possible, just re-release where I collected them. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear that. It's yeah. okay, climbing the wall. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not it's sure how, not how I would go about it. But I love the concept of having just fun project tanks that are temporary. Like it's not an yeah. investment or a breeding project that I'm yeah. going to be forever. It's just having fun with it and playing with fish that I've never gotten to play with because I haven't videoed it yet, but I went to the Creek back behind us and I caught, which is not normally something you catch in a high flow Creek like it is, but I caught a little catfish. It's about that long, but it's got more like an eel body just with the catfish head. I don't know if it's somebody said it's a mud cat. I don't know what it is. I know it gets big, but it's just totally different than anything I've seen. And then I got a crawfish that's like white and black. I mean, it's got white rings around it. And I've never seen one, you know, like in a creek before. They're usually just kind of that brown color, you know, the crawdads, crawfish, whatever. And mm -hmm. um, 
I saw some neat stuff back here in the creek, so I'm going to video them tomorrow before I let them go and see if anybody can help me figure out what in the world I caught. <laughs> it I, is I, interesting. I, you sure it's native and not something invasive? Yeah, I don't know. But this catfish is really weird. Like, it looks like a, it almost looks like a, I don't know, like almost like an eel, but it's got a mm -hmm. catfish head. But it's got a long body. It has a, it just, it's totally different than anything I've ever seen before. So there's no telling. And I've never seen anything like that in our creek. I've seen chubs and the crayfish before, but never like anything else in there. And I've been playing around that creek about two years now. So. Three GS, you live by a nuclear power plant, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No, it is Kentucky. <laughs> The next one you're going to find has three heads. Oh, goodness. Three <laughs> eyes. Something like that. Like the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> Only two eyeballs with three heads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Father Fish said, sounds like a mad Tom. Oh, yeah. I heard that. <laughs> I heard that. Oh, Allie, here's the chorus of kittens. <laughs> yes, she's singing you the song of her people. I'm happy to see you. You're laying here beside me. Are you I happy? Got... Well? <laughs> They're all crash out. We're all crazy cat ladies and y'all are here just to watch it us. Yeah, I'm a crazy cat lady in a camper now. <laughs> I, uh, hey, it works though. It works. <laughs> I streamed with Pam and Bob last night in this one was being a terror. She, at one point, she was just laying on the back of the love seat, attacking it like a lion on a water buffalo. <laughs> I'm like, what are you <laughs> never done that. Oh, my I need to be naughty. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty, though. I'm excited my... for the collecting down there because um, the house I'm going to be renting has... Uh, almost an acre, and the very back of the property butts up to the St. Oh, John's nice, y'all. Oh, very cool. That, that is a neat place. She sent me a picture the other day, and mm -hmm. it's beautiful, Amber. You've got so much potential. I can't wait to see what you do with it. I'm you excited. Have, yeah. It's a little hot. It's definitely going to be something amazing. We, we just have to wait and find out what. That's right. <laughs> I do know that. Time. Look forward to. I do know I have plans, um, hopefully spring, to put in a couple of wind tunnel style greenhouses for my gardens and do an irrigation fed from all the fish tubs. I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do it, but yeah, that's that's my main goal. What are, how did you even get up? Okay, no, no, we're not we're not doing that. Hi. Sorry. Um, Jen, yes, I am going one hour tonight because it's it's. Getting into football season, and Brian requests the TV. So, yes, I can only go one hour tonight. I'm sorry. Football. football over fish. <laughs> Peplin Creek Aquatics. I'm going to get you. Uh, well, he's, well, you know, he's watching football amongst the fish, so it's fine. We love Brian. We don't <laughs> you did not just throw up a Jeffree Star makeup palette. You did not hear that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Cindy Doherty says she's funny in Pam's stream last night. Oh, she oh, was. I was telling somebody about how bad she was in the stream, and they didn't believe me. So I took a series of like, just I kept pausing the stream and like scrolling through, taking a screenshot. Mm -hmm. And in every one, she was just progressively worse. At one point, I'm holding her up because she was <laughs> to the fan, just hanging <laughs> off of it. <laughs> she a couple <laughs> times she made this move like she was going to jump from my desk into a 20 high. <laughs> yeah, they'll do that. I bet he Cassie B said, you know, my youngest son said that my fish are higher maintenance than him. <laughs> <laughs> Could possibly be Cassie. Some maybe. Well, may well, how much time you spend with those fish? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mine are. They get frozen thawed blood worms and frozen thawed brine shrimp. And I'm like, if I was eating the human equivalent, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Patty. Welcome. Mm -hmm. She's so pleasant. <laughs> Patty, did you I see the video that. where my cat's learning her bad manners from you? You need to go watch that. And we need to have a talk. 
Uh, Susan just said that she looked up that cat or that catfish, the um, crayfish that I found. And what did it say? Uh, it says said, the ring well, crayfish. Yeah, from the Missouri area. That's neat because I mean, this is like a definite. I've never seen a crayfish like this. We caught it in a mm -hmm. trap. We set up like a little minnow trap and we caught the little catfish. And then we caught this crayfish, and it's real big. It's got real big pinchers, but it has like literally four big white rings on it, you know, like around its body. Or yeah. Around. And I've never seen a And I mean, I've caught a million crayfish out here, but I've never seen one that looked like that. Okay, really so you neat. caught a crayfish you didn't know about. You caught a catfish you're not sure of. Mary, <laughs> where are you? Hey, near a nuclear plant <laughs> she's in springfield she's in springfield that's i keep picturing that fish that three-eyed fish that bart caught oh my gosh yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> goodness Why are you that's thanks i'm gonna have to look that up I'm, i never did google it to check it i just caught it yesterday so and I thought I would share it sometime or another. I'm trying to make some videos. I haven't made any lately. Yeah, it's definitely been... share that because I would love to see that. Maybe people yeah, can give you an answer really to what it is. Let's see here. Hey, Degenerate Fish Keeper. Hello, Jason. How are you, neighbor? Neighbor from across oh, the, yeah. across the, what is that, the lake now? <laughs> yeah. So Amber, what kind of what kind of bettas are you gonna be doing? Are you still doing the wild bettas? Or are you just gonna do the? Oh, I want to say regular bettas. None of them are regular bettas, but you know what I mean, like the placats or the long uh, bell tails or crown tails or that kind of thing. Um, no, I definitely want to. I'm not breeding really any wilds at the moment, just because. With everything going on, I I can't even begin to keep up with hi, with the amount of work that they take and the pH for the fry. But once I've right. moved, once I've moved, I would really love to devote fifteen or twenty tanks to some of my favorite species. Um, a lot of people think there's because Google. A lot of people think there's ninety two species of wild, but at this point, we actually have about one hundred twenty three, I believe. That we've oh, listed. Wow. And at one point I was oh so proud to say how I had 98 of the blah 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 breeding. <laughs> it but it was a lot of work, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. And while I gained a lot of really valuable information that we didn't previously have, I feel like it almost took away from my ability to even properly promote them in the hobby with people because yeah. I was so busy taking care of things and trying to do aqua bid listings and really what I would like to do because with anything that's endangered, the more we have to breed it, the more we can preserve the numbers we already have because we are bolstering the numbers available. So we're lessening the ones that are being taken out of the wild, um, mm -hmm. basic supply and demand. So I think what I want to do is focus on the wilds that I feel are the most approachable to the average hobbyist but they still need to be preserved because I think by doing that, it'll actually do a lot more good towards saving even a couple of species instead of just kind of Pokemoning them and <laughs> hoping yeah. best and breeding a lot that realistically many people would not be able to keep like Betta Bertigala needs a pH of below 5.0. Right. Most people can't do that. No, and, and that's very hard to maintain at that level of acidity. It take it takes an incredible amount of trial. Like I saw, I saw some that were like at three point six. I can't remember which bed as it was, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, that would be so hard to uh, the lowest." The, because with um with my collectors, I've worked a lot with guys throughout Southeast Asia and Indonesia who actually go out mm -hmm. collecting. And they've given me parameters from both spawning grounds and just like the standard areas where they would be throughout the year. And mm -hmm. some of these species, like the swamp species, especially in Indo, 
they found beta apiapi at 2.8. Wow. That is That's incredible. Low. That is obscenely low. Like it was to the point where there was no vegetation, no riparian. It was a nearly fully like drained swamp that they were finding adults as well as fry. So That's wow. Incredible. They can go, and I, I truly believe that most wild bettas can tolerate extreme low pH. I've never tested it out, but I have that there because the lower the water levels get in some of these areas with no rainfall, the higher or the lower the pH goes and the higher the acidity peaks. Yes. So I really feel like these fish are just extremely adapted to low pH and the numbers we're pushing out of US tap compared to where we're pulling them is just like, so far removed. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, like Steven says, isn't that like burning acidic pH? Yeah. yeah. That's like extraordinarily low pH. It is, but it's like you said, it's also adaptability because if you think mm -hmm. about the thermal vents and the oceans, there's animals and sponges and creatures. There's, yeah. even, a, there's even a type of thermal vent snail that collects heavy metals from the thermal vent to encase their right. shells in metal. Really? So there's all kinds of crazy craziness in the world. Yes. That's I get the name of the snail, but uh, I had to look it up again, but it was so cool when I found that out. I was like, there's a metal snail that's brutal. <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> but with that also, I think it should be noted that it's not just their ability to withstand the pH that low, but like some right. and, and keep in mind, that's like an extremely low pH. That was one yeah. collection point at one time mm -hmm. of the year. By no means do not try to keep your fish in anything that low. I don't even think you could get it that low. personally. <laughs> but if you don't, I wouldn't advise trying it. But some of these species, if you do not keep the, the pH below a certain point, their eggs will dissolve, pretty much dissolve in the water. Um, I have watched them when I was first getting wilds and I was getting ones that when I later tested the water, they were coming in, it was like 5.5, 6.0 at the most. Mm -hmm. Drop them from that bag water into my tap pH, which was 7.0. It was like watching a sheet of slime coat just lift off the body and kind of float out. And within a day, I had fungus. I had all kinds of issues, and they died. Oh, yeah. Wow. Some of these fish, their slime coats are just so incredibly adapted to low pH that they're able to tolerate a pH where us as humans would be like, I can't, I can't swim in that. <laughs> like, that's going to cause some kind of irritation. That's what Cassie B said. She said, you can't even walk into that water. <laughs> we would just dissolve. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think you'd dissolve, but it would definitely cause skin irritation to be prolonged yeah. exposure. It yeah, also, you would definitely get some sloughing of your own. It also <laughs> makes you wonder just how much organic matter is in the water to make it go yeah. that low. That low. Yeah. And but, what, yeah, what exact organic matter? Definitely peat yeah. moss. Definitely peat moss. Some somewhere in there because most of the swamps throughout Indonesia have mm -hmm. a great deal of peat within the bed layers. Yeah, peat moss is notorious for making things very acidic and it's also a good water filter for if you're trying to lower the acidity in a more natural way for your aquariums. Mm -hmm. Works very I know, well. I remember when I kept discus years ago, the ones that I kept were still back when they didn't have them acclimated to higher pH now. But it was like 5.5 to 6, and I had to run peat moss through my canister filters, and I had to keep the water real soft. And it was a it was a challenge. I mean, that's been, like I said, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But that, I think that's why I love betas so much now, because I'm not having to put so much work. I worked so hard to yes. keep those discus. And then I had a heater crash after six years oh. and lost them. And it broke my heart. And I just kind of like left the aquarium lobby for a while. Because I worked. I can understand just, that. Yeah, it was a lot of work. And it just amazes me now when I see people saying that discus, like, uh, what's his name? Discus Hans and Hans some of the Jack Watley discus now. Yeah, Hans discus. Jack I'm Watley. sorry. I meant to, right. But we, um, we've we had 
so many changes in discus now that you can keep them you know other people can keep them easier than we did back 20 years ago oh, yeah so, yeah we so have some discus here in about 8.0 water and they're thriving yeah. they're doing great that blows my mind <laughs> it blows I think my mind. Is asking, could it be sulfuric somehow i would say so i also wouldn't know do you think it uh, is i th don't would know. it be I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, Hello, T-Bone. Welcome. Um, but on the note of what you were just saying, Mary, I had a thought. Oh, I think that might very well be a testament to the how to word it. The adaptability of a yeah. fish's genetics to the environment it's being raised in versus yeah being raised in one environment and then removed and placed in another. So I actually did um, a series of tests for about two years where I took lower pH beta species, 5.2, 5.5, and I would get them to lay the eggs in the bubble nest and then I would pull them out and I would slowly start adding water that I'd been soaking crushed coral in and pumping the pH up and up and I kept pushing the metal blue on them and I lost a lot of eggs. I figured out how to artificially hatch them and not lose them. But the first time around that I did it and the fry were stronger than the parents. They were less susceptible to funguses, um, just stress kind of induced things that you'd see. I never had an issue with velvet with them. Uh, they were a lot more tolerant to high light without having it affect the slime coat. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I almost think with things like discus where we've bred a lot of the parent behavior out of them through yeah. debriding and so much of it. We've also kind of bred in a predisposition to our parameters versus South American soft water yeah. madness. But well, yeah, because also like the ones that are strong enough to survive in our parameters mm -hmm. and thrive in them actually went on to breed and pass on those adapt adaptability skills to their fry. Yeah genetically just like um guppies the guppies that them. jump versus the guppies that won't jump <laughs> right. let all the ones that are going to jump jump and just breed the ones that stay and you won't have any more jumpers in your further generations <laughs> or very few of them at least you get that in bettas uh if you have a male that's prone to eating yeah. eggs or fry and you do manage to get babies from him the males mm -hmm. will usually be egg eaters or fry eaters, same with tail biting, um, glass pacing, like fish that just perpetually pace along the front of the tank, really agitated looking. That's another mm -hmm. just genetic thing that they pass on. It's really astounding how much fish genetics involved. You know what I mean? Like you, you really wouldn't think behaviors would be a genetic ingrained trait, but it really does make a lot of sense as a survival skill. Like mm -hmm. there are areas with higher predation and the fish learn to be more skittish and they produce more skittish offspring. They're more likely to be hiding and fearful of something that could eat them. And they'll probably end right. up in better numbers. And that could also help you better understand other species as well, not just fish species. It can go on to other species, wow. mammals and even as far as humans, like why do people act right. a certain way? Why do they tend to be a certain way? Maybe it's something in their genetics that brings it yeah. about. But Jimmy P Aquatic says, first time here, your stream is really great and very informative. Thank you. Also a sincere hello to Mary and Amber. And hello, Jimmy P. Thank you for yeah, coming Jimmy and hanging Jimmy. with us. Thank you for joining us. Hope you come um, back. <laughs> on that yeah. note, they actually did a study in the 80s, um, and it involved an adoption agency in New York that was extremely prestigious. And basically, mm -hmm. they took triplets, and they split them up, and they put one boy with an extremely wealthy family, very religious, very affluent. They put another one with just middle class, normal, not religious, what have you. And then they yeah. placed their son with a family that was didn't really have a lot of money, you know, they, they, I don't know, religious background, but somehow the boys ended up finding each other in their early twenties. Like two of them found each other and it became an internet thing. And then the third was just like, hang on a minute. 
And I've seen different like documentaries on it. And apparently when the three boys met, it was absolutely ridiculous because they all had the exact same mannerisms, the exact same laugh, the exact same <laughs> sense of humor, just everything about them was very much like, no, we, we're totally related and the same person, even though we even though were, they were raised in different environments. Mm -hmm. That Isn't is that well, incredible. Yep. Now, I have, That's I, I, incredible. Here. I have little twin granddaughters that are three years old. And I mean, they're like one child when you see them <laughs> together. They have their own little communication. Like the other night, one of them fell out of the bed and the other one was still asleep. <laughs> Well, Shaylee fell out of the bed and Geneva laughed in her sleep. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, she was totally out. Geneva or Shaylee hit the floor and I heard her go thump. And I was like, oh no. And Geneva went, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> they are so oh, in tune with each other. Oh, and they're going to start I'm, kinder or they're going to start preschool this year. They're only three. Oh. So. <laughs> They've never been separated. So it's interesting. They're going to put them in the same class, but it's going to be very interesting to see how they, because they have their own communication. I've never seen anything like it. That poor teacher. My yeah, mom's twins communication is something. something my mom's next level. two sisters are twins, and it's, it. I know what you mean, Mary, the way they, they don't even talk to, they use like very few words, and it's just like a full yeah. conversation, and you're just left totally out of the loop. <laughs> You just watch them and they're like doo, 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 to each other and, and they know what they're saying. They know what they're doing and they play mm -hmm. so good together. Hi, Fishon. Hello, Fishon. Welcome. Let's see. I better check out the chat. I think everybody's just having a good time and enjoying the Three, chat. We had a question. Have you ever had a beta female that identified as a male? Yes. Um, I can't I I can't speak for them. I don't know if she was just feeling herself or she thought he was she was a male, but I've definitely had some females that were extremely aggressive. Um, I've had females that built their own bubble nest. I've had females that beat, beat the male up, kicked him out of the area to spawn, blew a bubble nest, dropped eggs and put them in the nest and fought the male off the whole time. And I'm like, you no, you can't do this by yourself. Wow. <laughs> wow. Just like, I don't need no man. That's what I'm trying to do it herself. <laughs> she was like, I can do this. I don't need anybody. She was No, though she was totally singing, anything you can do, I can do better. No. <laughs> I really felt for that man because I'm like, you, you were trying so hard, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Now, my 15 gallon I used to have sitting behind me, I had two females in there that like acted like a male and a female. They would they would literally wrap around each other and embrace each other. They, I don't know, I'd never seen anything like it, but they wouldn't fight, but they were very, mm -hmm. like, standoffish, but then they yeah. would, like, do their little thing, and they were happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And Mike I, says, Jen and anyone, everyone who asked for stickers, they are on the way. Awesome, Mike. Oh, I Am I getting a sticker? Did I ask for a sticker? If not, I want Mom, a sticker. I need a sticker. <laughs> I need mm -hmm. my sticker board back. I got three to three behind me. I think you said that he has one that makes nests all the time. Yeah, like three some three. females just do. And I currently have um, 120 high with about 40, let me see, 10 week old, 12, no, that's 12, 12 week old fry in there. And the other day, I go mm -hmm. to feed them, and the entire like top of the water, half of it is a bubble nest. And I'm like, what the wow. heck? And yeah. I bend down and look, and there's little males all over the surface, just making like one giant communal bubble. That's oh, wow. yeah. I went I'm, because I've been reading about it for over twenty years at this point. So I'm like, I don't know what I just stumbled upon, but I feel <laughs> like I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> 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 like, like some insane incestual communal. Spawning. <laughs> like, I will feed you. Just talk what you mm. doing. Right. <laughs> oh, goodness. I filmed it and took a picture. And I was like, I don't even know how to explain this on Instagram. I don't even know what I'm looking at. What are you looking at? That's right. <laughs> There's just like 10, 15 little males up blown bubbles. I'm like, I don't, I, what the heck? <laughs> 
<laughs> what was in the water that I changed you guys with yesterday? <laughs> oh. Pack explosion. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the Hot Mess Express, and sometimes we derail. But Patrick Cardi saying, Amber, I visited Vietnam a few times and seen fish plants that not only in books or online websites. I was taken to an island in Vietnam that still have the smallest known wild deer, only 19 inches long. That's adorable. Can you, I think those are the pygmy deer, correct? I think I've seen them in a documentary before. I'm still very much at heart, that six-year-old little girl that's like, oh, you're tiny and cute. I want one. <laughs> Hence my disposition for loving resboras. <laughs> They're so tiny. I don't know what it is. And, it's, and it, this is going to sound horrible, but if something's tiny but also pudgy or fat, mm -hmm. it's just the cutest thing in the world. It's like, Short and stout. Yeah. <laughs> tiny pudgy critters are just beyond. That's why certain fish are just super cute. <laughs> Like parrotfish, okay. even if you think they look deformed, they're adorable because they're just like, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Dreamweaver. Welcome. Thank you for coming in and hanging out with us. I almost made it the whole stream with that dog's barking. <laughs> and Jen said it was a bed of cult. <laughs> right? I don't know. Did you see doing. little black robes in the tank afterwards? or? No, no. And I kept checking all day to see if there were eggs and there weren't any. I'm like, I don't understand any of this madness. I'm going to do a water <laughs> change and pretend I didn't interrupt anything here. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ricky said he has a rooster that is trying to mate with an American pecking duck. <laughs> oh, goodness, oh, Ricky. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> At least it's not the other way around because that, right. that can lead to injury. <laughs> They don't exactly have compatible. Mm -hmm. Yes, many puppy pigs are adorable. They are so cute, then, until oh, they get like 700 pounds because they're not really little. <laughs> Enrico says, How about tall, pudgy, hairy creatures? <laughs> also, also adorable. Basquatches? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're cute. <laughs> love Rico. We love you, Rico. <laughs> so, one of my favorite things, I don't know if. Um, well, I know Mary knows Haley, but uh, Roxy, I don't know if you know Haley Abad Ball Aquatics. Yes. But I, she's like my landing point anytime I'm going to an expo or something because she's the perfect, like, in between places. And usually oh, she, she is amazing. Mm -hmm. But in her town, they have, and I, I'm not making this up, there is a plywood life size cutout of Bigfoot walking into the woods on the roadside. <laughs> And so many people apparently called into the like state troopers that they put two more that are just smaller, but it really <laughs> makes it look like a family of Bigfoots like descending into the forest. Love that. I love oh, that. Man. We had like in Pennsylvania, there were so many people in in like because we I lived in the rural area. So many farmers had those Bigfoot like thing cut out somewhere hidden on their property so when you drive by you think you're seeing it. And I was like, oh, how many phone calls do the cops get about those things? <laughs> oh, in Kentucky, all we got is people running around in ghillie suits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ricky says, I don't think that's Jenny's Bigfoot that everyone's been looking for. You never know. You never know, Ricky. You truly never know. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And then said, oh, there's nothing cuter than a dash and puppy that just ate and has that fat belly and puppy breath. Oh, that's <laughs> true. Unless it's a chihuahua. <laughs> I agree, 3G. Sack Squatch is my religion. Are you still watching Sack Watch every week? I uh, <laughs> Sack Squatch is this dude that goes in the woods like once a week. He live streams and he plays a saxophone and... <laughs> I don't know why I liked it so much, but I really enjoy the music, that, and it's just funny. And <laughs> is that the guy who used to have like his own show on Discovery about hunting Bigfoot? No, okay. no, this guy you don't know who he is. Like he's just always in his Sasquatch suit. I'll never yeah. forget that guy. He did one episode in a dress with lipstick, like non-ironically. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he's like an attractive female might 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 call him in, and he's just walking around in the woods at night, whooping in the forest. And... In Bigfoot with the big guy from California. I think his name was Bobo. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> It was. Oh, <laughs> he was phenomenal, though, because sometimes he'd talk and you're like, I have no clue what he's saying. Like, what time <laughs> he's, he's talking about something with a gun, he's like, butter, nah, 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 crap, pop like me. I'm like, whoa. I only heard <laughs> what is this? Well, we are down here to the last two minutes of our hour. That was so cool. Wick, it was so awesome hanging oh, out with you, so Amber. Yeah, we'll definitely hope to have you come back once you settle in. Um, and I think KG is going next, correct? Hello, Jay Oliver, welcome. Do not know. <laughs> I, think, I think they are going next. Uh, what do you think our hashtag should be? I know we're just little guys, but we can still send on over. <laughs> I think it should just be Hot Mess Express. <laughs> Hashtag Hot Mess Express to so KG Tropical. So. Sounds great to me. <laughs> Amber, I want to thank you thank so you. much for being our guest this evening. Yes. Yeah, thank you for thank having you. me. This has been so much fun. It really you was. It's, it's yes, such a good I'm look, so looking forward to you getting settled and feeling better and be able to come back around. We miss you. We miss you. <laughs> I miss being around sometimes with everything going on and how much I, time I just spend by myself these days. It's when whenever I come on these, I'm just like, oh my God, people, my people, I can talk about me. I don't know. You are welcome here anytime. Anytime right, you want to come, awesome. you are welcome. We'd love to have you. So, is there anything you'd like to say or anything you'd like to promote before we head out of here for the evening? Just thank you guys for having me. And yes, um, more girls. In the aquarium hobby, that's what we should yeah. be promoting. <laughs> well, we sure have some amazing ladies in our community. So, thank you for joining us. We love you and appreciate you so much. That's it. We love you, Amber. Stay strong. We are with you. <laughs> thank you, ladies. I love you guys too. <laughs> and I want to say thank you to everyone that has joined us this evening in chat. I love spending this time with you each and every week. I look forward to this. And thank you, Mods, for all your hard work and dedication that you do for dropping links and finding the random articles that we talk about on the fly. Greatly appreciate you. And I just want to say thank you to you both. Mary, love you so much. Amber, love, love you so much. You. I thank wish you well in your, your, you in your health you. and on your trip. And we will Bye. see you all around the show. So all of you have a great evening. And it's hashtag Hot Mess Express to KG. And as I say at the end of all my videos, if it can't be a great day, make it one. Make it love one. you all. Bye. Bye y'all.